that person that walked out on you. Yes, that's hurtful, but don't give up on life. They didn't put your fire out. They can't stop your destiny. You're going to love again. You're going to dream again. You're going to laugh again. God has someone coming for you much better than who left. Your latter days are going to be better than your former days. Now get your passion back. Get your fire back. Those dreams you've given up on, you need to get that poker out and start stirring them up. Start pursuing them again. Those promises that you've let go of. Seems like it's too late. The expert said that you can't have a child, that you won't get well, that that family member will never get back on course. Those are lies to try to discourage you to keep those embers from ever catching fire. The enemy knows he can't put out your flame, but if he can deceive you into living with no passion, no enthusiasm, dragging through the day, thinking you've reached your limits, then that will keep you from... I am an average, ordinary human being. I used to say I'm below average, but the fact is I don't think that's really true. I actually think everybody's born with giftedness. Now, what is your gift? It's the thing that you do the absolute best with the least amount of effort. Your gift will make room for you. Stop trying to be something you ain't gifted at. All of you have this gift. Identify it. You're wasting your time pursuing your passion. Stop tripping. If you fry chicken better than everybody you know, you ought to be somewhere frying chicken. You know the story of Marie Callender's? She worked for a diner that was going out of business. It was her only job. She was a single mother. She needed that job, but the diner was going to close. So she went to the owner of the diner and said, let me bake one of my pies and see if I can help you make a little money. He said, whatever, bring it in. He, she bought one pie in. They sold every slice. The next day, so many people asked for the pie, she had to make four pies. She made so many pies at this store that she eventually saved her money and put a commercial oven in her house. The dude's shop, he ain't selling hamburger no more. All he's selling is them damn pies. Marie Callender now has over 120 restaurants. When you figure out what those gifts are, you use them in the service of other people, you start living a pretty blissful life didn't take very long for me to find out what my gifts were. It's not IQ. I'm not the strongest dude in the world. I'm not the funniest dude in the world. But I am a pretty good communicator and I'm a really good listener. I love being present with people. And one of my gifts is I sincerely care about people. And you ought to be thinking about what your gifts are. I ask high performers, even like you guys, what's your giftedness? And you'd have a hard time telling me. Like for me, my, and my, we used an IQ test in my family. I was fourth out of four people in my own house. I've been able to identify what my gifts are. I can transfer energy to people. I will outwork your ass. Those are gifts. So I always had these gifts that were mine. You've got yours. If you'll take an inventory of what they are, you'll be a more wealthy, productive person. I've been able to build a significant nine-figure net worth in my life, and I'm a goober. So I want you to think if a goober dude like me can end up doing that stuff, what could you accomplish? I'm a really goofy dude. I've always wanted to be somebody. Anybody relate to that? Say yes or no. I don't want to be. There's a bunch of jokers want to be somebody. I need to be somebody. Are you like that or not? I needed to be somebody. I wasn't playing with my life. When I was 30 years old, I had my first heart attack. So I might not be the fastest, the strongest, the smartest, none of that crap, but I will outwork your ass and I flat out want it more than you. But I've always wanted to be somebody. You probably heard that term, fake it till you make it. Any of you ever done that before? My first job, I was an electrician. Then I was a bus boy at the whole enchilada. That was an upgrade, because they let me go as an electrician because I couldn't show up to work and get there by 6 a.m. And then I worked at an orphanage that changed my life, and then I became in the financial business and got wealthy. There's nothing about me. So I wanted to be rich. I started in the financial company. I'm like, hey, I can't be driving around like, I had a Honda CRX. So I thought, man, I need to drive a Mercedes for people to take me damn serious. So I'm reading the penny saver, and it says, kit car Mercedes, 1997 Mercedes-Benz 6, a 600 convertible kit car that's built on an 88 Chrysler LeBaron frame. I'm not playing with you. I did this. I lived in that car for two years. 
That's the story of me wanting to be somebody. So I don't know where you're at right now, but are you slightly ahead of a Velcro together Mercedes? Yes or no? Yes? Now, what did I become? What, what changed with me where things changed? I read a book called Selling the Dream by a guy named Guy Kawasaki about that same time. Guy Kawasaki was the guy that sort of marketed Macintosh for Apple. I'm very familiar with what made that company work. They had a dude that led that company who was a crazy man named Steve Jobs. And Steve Jobs didn't have a high IQ. He was an intense, psycho, crazy. He was a great storyteller. Wipe this down. The greatest leaders are evangelical about their cause. They are cause-oriented leaders. To the extent that you'll be a great father is to the extent that you can become evangelical about the cause and the mission your family's on. I'm constantly telling my children, we're gonna do something awesome. Since my son was a little boy, every night he go to bed, you're a leader, you're a gladiator, you're the greatest of all time, Mac. I tell my daughter that all the time. Why? No one told me that crap when I was growing up. So what do those leaders have in common? If we go back and look at there, what does Steve Jobs, Oprah Winfrey, my dumb ass, what do we all have in common? In different ways, they became evangelical about their mission and their cause and their company. What's an evangelist do? A person who seeks to convert others, a zealous advocate of a cause. That's what an evangelist does. You must speak about these things, write about these things. When your people get around you, it's infectious and repetitive, and you don't tire of saying it over and over and again and again, because I'm relentless about it. Why? Because our obsessions become our possessions. So if you want to do something, if you've thought about something you want to do, take it head on. Decide that you're going to face it, that whatever shortcomings you have, that you're going to strengthen yourself there, that you're going to get started right now. Do what you can, where you are with what you have, and never be satisfied. Always strive to be more than that which you are. Yeah, don't get satisfied with yourself. Always know that wherever you are, you can enjoy more, that you deserve more. But if you really begin to think about what you think about on a regular basis, most of you are thinking about what you're worried about, you're afraid of, and what you're concerned or anxious about. You don't take control about what you're putting in your mind. When you're intentional about something, it loses its power over you. Once you're aware you're doing something, it can't affect you like it can when you're not aware. But you have an emotional home. You have a series of emotions you live with regularly, don't you? Those emotions could be bliss, ecstasy, passion, joy, peace, faith, but they could also be worry, stress, anger, anxiety, aren't they? And because you've done it over and over again, even though you know they don't serve you, you will find a way on a very regular basis to get those damn emotions. The quality of your emotions is going to be the quality of your life. All of you this year wrote down a bunch of things you want to achieve. You and I have gotten pretty good at achieving things we put our mind to, haven't we? Including the negative things. Now, since you're so good at getting what you want, what if you set an outcome to begin to achieve certain emotions on a regular basis? Because what you've done is you've deluded yourself into thinking, if I can get five million in the bank, if I get that hot so-and-so girl, then I'll have those emotions I want. That ain't how it works. I want you to have a bunch of stuff. I want you to have a bunch of achievement. But if you start to become more intentional, I'm gonna find some peace every day. I'm gonna find some solitude every day. Because you're not getting out of here alive. You ain't getting out of here alive. Why don't you start to be a little happier? A little bit more giving, man. You'd be so happy you did. The fact is the strongest men are the ones who are willing to give joy, give passion, give peace to people. Those are the strongest men in the world, right? We've all been wired a little bit differently. In fact, you know what? I'm going to cut the crap. I'm going to get you emotional. I'm going to give you a secret. I think I'm the way I am because of what I watched my dad do. I wasn't, I'm not an alcoholic, but my dad was a dude who get angry pretty quick, get stressed pretty quick. So your life may look a whole lot different, and maybe the external part of your life's not like it. But what about the internal part? Has it been all it's been cracked up to be to get where you are? Or didn't you think you'd feel better about yourself by the time you got here? And your kids, you know when you go to one of your kids' Little League games, there's 25 kids out there, nine on each side plus the dugout, which kid do you see? You see your little dude, don't you? Well, guess what? All they see is you. They love you because you're dad, but at some point, are they proud of you? Are you a man making a difference in the world? And you know what they want more than anything than you to be all this other stuff? Is dad happy? And they know when you're lying. They don't see anybody else. The whole prism of the world of what they think they can experience, you're providing them. And it's not the stuff, it's the emotions. Why don't you just give yourself a break? 
don't you just be a little happier right now? You can do that right now. In this moment, you can intend to decide that you're just going to begin to see things. You have a, what if you started to filter into that things that just brought you bliss and peace and happiness? You were born to do something awesome. You were also born to be happy. And you think, man, if I start having all of this happiness crap you're talking about, I'm gonna lose my drive. That's what keeps me working. That's what you think. I used to think it too. There's a difference between happiness and satisfaction. You can be simultaneously incredibly blissful and still totally dissatisfied. Here's what happened to me. I was building a mansion and I'm all wound up one day. And I walk in, there's all these guys probably in the country illegally. They were working on my kitchen, right? These guys are making no money. They've left their families. I'm walking into my dadgum mansion I'm building with my wife and my baby, pissed off about some call I just had. And I look over, they got mariachi music playing. They're dancing and laughing as they're doing their job. And I thought to myself, if life were counted by the emotions we experience, they're kicking my ass right now. These guys have nothing and they find a way to get joy. Don't lose the emotional part of your life just to go win and get more stuff. You've lost touch with who you are, the core of your being. You're on social media too much. You're listening to what other people are telling you. You gotta listen to yourself. You gotta cut all that shit out. You have to look at the things that you love and the things that you hate. So what you don't like is very instructive to you, right? You're looking at things that are very powerful inside of you, that are emotional, they're not intellectual, they're feelings, they're emotions. They're visceral things that you connect to. I've always followed the laws of power, which is change things up, enter action with boldness, don't be afraid to do things differently. Adapt your strategy to the circumstance. It's never too late. The earlier you figure it out, the better off you are. But it can happen later in life. Now, I figured out at an early age that I wanted to write. I didn't know what I wanted to write, but I loved words and I loved writing. And if I didn't have that connection when I was eight years old, all the way into high school and college, I would have been a lost soul. And I empathize with a lot of people who don't have that feeling when they're 8 or 18 or in their 20s. But I have tried to tell people everybody has it. You're just not listening to yourself. You've lost touch with who you are. There are five forms of intelligence. We normally associate intelligence with intellectuals, with our Noam Chomsky, with Albert Einstein. No, intelligence comes in all forms. Working with your hands is a form of intelligence. A carpenter has a high form of intelligence. People who are sports, who are athletic, who use their body, that's another form of intelligence. There's music, there's math, there's language. You have one of these frames of mind. By the way your brain is wired, you, have, you are inclined towards one of them. Figure that out. You gotta be a bit bold. You have to embrace what makes you different. It takes time. To do anything in life takes time and hours and patience and work. So I like to tell people to go back to their earliest childhood memories of things that really excited them before they got mixed up with parents, teachers, and all that, other people telling them stuff, you know? You gotta cut all that shit out. You know, I was, I was frustrated, I was depressed. I even have to admit I had moments that were slightly suicidal because I knew deep down that I could do something. I was, I was different from other people, I had different experiences, you know, and I knew that I had, there was something I needed to express. There was a purpose to the, how my life had unfolded, but I couldn't find it. I had tried everything, I had every, tried every form of writing, every possible endeavor you can imagine, it just didn't click. So I was very deeply frustrated. And the frustration I tell people, it's a good thing. Negative emotions are trying to teach you something. They're trying to teach you the opposite. Something else is going on. Frustration, what would be worse than frustration would be despair, giving up. No hope, but frustration is a sign that you haven't given up. You're, you know you can do something, but you haven't figured it out. So when you have those kind of feelings, look at them and there's something positive in that. So I knew that there was something I was meant to do. I just couldn't figure it out when.
It's easy for me, a boomer, I have to admit that, to preach to you when you have to gone through like two, we've gone through a pandemic, a made, a, what looks like to be a recession. And then if you're a millennial, you went through another, you went through the crash in 08. It's easy for me to preach. You're dealing with really difficult circumstances. So a lot of people are rethinking their lives. They don't want to work at crap jobs just to get by. And I applaud that 100%, right? That's great. So you want to think about working for yourself is the ultimate position in this world. And even though times are difficult, even though it may seem like a, just a dream, there's so much potential out there for entrepreneurial spirit, for creating your own startup, for creating your own podcast, for going your own path in life. You don't have to follow other people. It's not like it was when I was growing up. There were things that were better back then, there are things that were a lot worse, right? You have so many more options. It's just that you're not going to reach them. You're not going to be happy in this short time that you have to be alive unless you take it seriously and still have some fun and adventure and excitement. You got to listen to yourself. And you have to embrace what makes you different. Just don't listen to your parents go, I got to be making $100,000 when I'm 23 and go to law school and do all this stuff you're gonna burn out. So kind of understand your, I guess the main thing I would say is know who you are, know what, what you're, what you're, you know, deep down your core, what you love, what you hate, and what you were destined to create in this world. That's like the most important process you can go through. Everybody has that potential, but I know it doesn't come easy. It's a process and you have to be patient, but you have to put in the work. But another skill that you cannot ignore is the social. We're social animals. And there are a lot of people in life who ignore that because they're shy. And I was very shy as a young man. I was mostly very quite introverted as well. Because they're shy, they just simply lean on their own strength, which is learning something really well, learning math or learning algorithms or learning how to write, etc. And they ignore the social because they're afraid of it. But you cannot get ahead in this world as a social animal, dependent on other people in every aspect of life, unless you treat that as another skill as well. So yes, the process of looking inward is absolutely essential, but you cannot disconnect yourself from your teachers, your mentors, your colleagues. You could have all the skill in the world and know your life's task brilliantly, but if you continually alienate people by your boorish behavior, by your insensitivity, all of the skill level in the world will be completely neutralized by your own mistakes. I didn't listen to other people. At so many turning points in my life, I could have been discouraged. People could have said, get the, you know, I had somebody say, Robert, you're never going to be a good writer in life. You know, you need to go to business school, etc." My parents tried to funnel me this way or that way. I was stubborn and I was rebellious and I did my own thing. And um, because of that, I have kind of a, 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 a different voice from other people, right? And when I look at books out there, I'm searching for that voice, for that voice of somebody who's different, who has something different to say, who has, speaks in a different tone of voice, that has their blood and their personality in their writing. And I don't find it often, but when I do, it's a great thing. And so to me, success in life is kind of being who you are. There's a famous expression of, of the great ancient Greek poet Pindar about become who you are. It's a process of becoming who you actually are and realizing what it is. So we talked about my weirdness earlier on and Following that has allowed me to craft my own message, which is basically about opening your eyes up to the reality of the world and to what people are like. But I wasn't, I'm not able to do that unless I had ignored what other people tried to foist on me earlier on in life. 
it's never too late.